Hey, what's up guys? It's Liam Killen. When I was a teenager and like completely obsessed with drums, I used to collect like educational rhythmic books. Books like Beyond Bop Drumming, which is about jazz. Future Sounds, which was written by a wicked drummer named David Garibaldi, who used to play in the Tower of Power in the 70s. So definitely some useful information in there. And then there's this one here. So this one's called West African Rhythms for Drum Set. And I remember learning a lot from this book. With the whole Black Lives Matter movement, there's been a lot of focus on the impact that black culture has had on North America. Pretty much all the popular rhythms that you hear today, like backbeats or funk rhythms, anything like that, that derives from African culture, going way back to the roots. So in this video, we're gonna be paying a tribute to those rhythms and applying them to modern instruments like the drum brute impact. As for the book, West African Rhythms for Drum Set, this book goes very, very deep and we're just gonna be scratching the surface, focusing on like one or two pages. Apologies in advance because this book is looking pretty rugged. I actually left it in a crate outside for like a few seasons, uh, forgot about it, but it's still intact, so we're good. It's, uh, it's legible. <laughs> so yeah, West African Rhythms, Drum Brute Impact. Let's take this into the studio. All right, so a few things to mention here now. First off, I'm giving away a brand new, still boxed Micro Freak vocoder edition. So for anyone who's interested in that, I've linked the video instructions up here and also in the description. I mean, why wouldn't you enter, right? You have nothing to lose and the winner will be announced on September 23rd, 2020. Also, all the loops that I come up with today, I'll be uploading onto my cell phone for you guys to just use to your liking. I'll link that in the description as well. God, so nice to you guys. And now, back to the book. I really love how this book breaks down traditional rhythms. When you think of African music, drum set is not the first thing that comes to mind, obviously. That's why the book's called West African Rhythms for a Drum Set. So it's adapting like a full drum ensemble and then applying that to the drum kit. In a traditional ensemble, you'd have a big group of people that are playing just one percussive instrument at a time, and then they're combining rhythms to make a full on groove. And so we see a written out example of this right here. We have Siki Drum Ensemble, Ashanti people, and then you have all the different types of drums. I'm gonna botch the pronunciation of these. Free, free kiwa, metal castanet bell. So metal, I'm thinking that could maybe be on the hi hat. Natorwa, Natorwa. <laughs> Word rattle. Don't know hourglass string tension drum. Agwigwiwa, Agwig, Agwig, Agwigwiwa. It's a small drum. Then we have a tamlin drum, high pitched frame drum. Tamlin drum two, tamlin drum three. Another tamlin drum three, which is playing variations. Apentima. And drum. And then lastly, we have a pentama dialogue pattern. So all of these together, that makes the Siki drum ensemble. So the best thing a drummer can do is take all these patterns and apply them to different pitched instruments, hi-hat, snare, toms, bass drum, just getting a general sense of what the pattern sounds like. And that's exactly what we'll be doing with the drum root impact. This whole thing is a really cool experience for me. I, I feel like pretty futuristic right now. <laughs> I almost feel like I'm in three generations at once, right? So you have like the traditional drum patterns, ancient, if you turn the page over, these are all applied to modern drum set. And then like future with the drum brood impact. So we'll start by breaking down all these rhythms and then programming them into the drum brood. I'm just gonna make sure that I have four empty patterns here. Empty, 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 good. Good to go. If you don't know how to read music, no problem. Just use your ears. <laughs> Hopefully you'll still get a feel for like where I'm placing the notes within the sequence. So this page is out of frame. That's fine. We're only gonna be looking at this page here. And there are two patterns that are consistent throughout all of these variations here. That's the kick drum. It's like a heart four on the floor thing. And then there's a hi-hat pattern as well. So let's program that. We'll start with kick, four on the floor, this, we're gonna make sure that we are a two bar pattern, which we already are, great. Let's hear that. So this is the hi-hat we'll use. Right? Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. Okay, next thing, right away I'm gonna swing this because that's that's sort of like the African feel a little bit. There's like, there's always a bit of swing to it. It's never gonna sound authentic, but we do what we can. Next, there's actually a second hi-hat pattern. So we're gonna use the second close hi-hat. It's playing on the upbeats. 
So the and of two, and of three, and of four. I'll just program that right in, like so. Let's play that. Maybe change the uh, color. Nice. Maybe change the kick color too. No. Oh, nice. A little bit darker. I like. I like. We'll start with one of the first patterns here. So this is floor tom and that's high tom. So that would be, right? So we have low tom, high tom. We could switch between those two. So I'm just going to program that right in. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Okay. Dum, dum. Dum, dum, bop. Right there. Dum, dum, bop. Dum, dum, bop. Bop, boom, bop. Like that. Okay, we're missing one last time. Boom, ba, boom, ba, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, ba, boom, ba, boom, boom. Okay, we're gonna make this a two-barn pattern as well, and we'll just copy that over. Ba, boom, ba, ba, boom, ba. Okay, dum, dum, da. Dum, dum, da. Ba, boom, ba. Ba, boom, ba. Missed it. Ba, ba, boom, ba. Perfect. So that's the toms. And before I forget, I'm also going to copy this to all of these patterns here as well, just so we have a foundation. So we'll go copy pattern, copying to here, copy pattern, copying to there, copy pattern. And now we're all set. Let's go to one just to stay consistent here. That's the first foundational beat that we'll use. The second one is, is quite similar. There's a snare drum on the end of two. So we're gonna take away the tom on the end of two and replace it with a snare. Let's find a nice snare tone. Also, just in general, I'm going with pretty like short and snappy tones to make it sound more like percussive instruments. This sort of thing. That sounds like an 80s snare. It doesn't really sound like a cheap little percussive instrument, you know? Okay, so that's on the end of two. Doom, pa. Pa. Right? Okay, there's some other adjustments to be made here. patterns so we're halfway through let's move on to uh, this one this one okay that's weird so just the toms low tom on all the downbeats this is this one's gonna be weird okay it's very dinky and then the high ones on all the upbeats It's a thing. That snare that's playing on the end of two, it's not supposed to be there, but we're just gonna leave it there anyways because it adds to the weirdness. So for the last pattern, pattern four, we're gonna program this. Low toms, step, boo boop, boop. And then second pattern as well, or first one, boo boop, boop. Once again. Do do do.
At this point, you might be thinking like, what's the point of having two bars? A lot of these patterns are just one bar and they're repeating, but this just leaves us an option to add a fill if we want with the toms. We could also just use the random function, but I usually like to use two bars so that you could add a variation if you want afterwards. We're done with this. From now on, we're just gonna use our ears. So snare, pattern four, ta, 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 ta. And same thing here, ta, 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 ta. Me like it. <laughs> Pattern two, we're gonna add a open hi-hat on the end of four of the second bar. Like that, so right here. Same with pattern three, we're gonna add a hi-hat once again on the end of four of the second bar. Okay, so last minute decision, patterns two, three, we're gonna skip, we're not gonna use them at all. As you guys know, we're making music here, so like sometimes you just gotta toss stuff away. And so to make things less confusing, I'm just gonna copy this over, copy pattern, there, and I'm gonna copy this guy over as well. Pattern here. Just so we're not confused over that. I just thought that the two middle patterns were, they didn't fit. Like the second one lost momentum and the third one was just annoying, I thought. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so now let's do this justice. We're gonna hear it all one last time. Next, and this is one of my favorite things to do, we're gonna hear these loops in context. My buddy Chris Petra, who is on Instagram, he's amazing if you're into tape loops. He's the guy, go follow him. He's really into like degrading his synth sounds through tape and he just has a really good ear. He also has a free sample pack, which I think would fit really well with these types of beats. In fact, we've already made a track together. I actually used one of his loops from this sample pack we're about to look at. Here's the track that we made. I'm actually gonna drop one of these into a session and see what it sounds like. The only thing is I'm pretty sure it's not to a click. In fact, I think I might need to chop some of this up. Give me a second. That's it. So we're actually gonna have to slow this down on the drum root impact. I'm gonna bring it down to 90 beats per minute and we'll see if this works. <laughs> ah, that's... Sorry about that. That's one annoying thing about the drum brute. You have to change the tempo of all four of these beats. Unless there's a way to copy it over, I'm not sure if you're able to do that, but uh, I'm just gonna change the tempo of all four for now. Okay, 90, let's try that again. That's super weird, but so is this. A little bit of side chain. I would probably change a few things like mixing wise within the drum brute, but this is a great starting point for a track. Hmm, let's develop this one a little more.
I think that's enough for you guys to digest for now. There's one super important thing that I'm gonna mention for every drum brute video that I do. Just make sure that you save everything before shutting it down because if you don't, it's lost. So make sure to do that. Hopefully this inspired you guys some. It's always nice to recycle rhythms, especially ancient African rhythms. I hope you had as much fun as I did. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate your support. Reminder that if you're into these rhythms, they're available to download off of my Cellfi for free. So you can go pick that up, linked in the description. Also a big reminder that I'm giving away this glorious, brand new, still in the box, Micro Freak vocoder edition. Oh, let me just back it up. The contest is still going on and the winner will be announced on the 23rd of September. So enter, you have nothing to lose. Super easy entry. I'll be featuring Arturia products across all of my social media, basically until the winner is announced. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one.